Hi, my name is Kapil Painse. I'm a solutions architect here at Amazon Web Services. Today, I'm here to talk about ML Ops, that is the art of running machine learning operations at scale. We will start by unpacking the typical development cycle of machine learning, and then we will talk about the challenges of operating machine learning at scale. We will close out this session with a deep dive discussion about how you can build out an operational framework for ML on AWS in a way that overcomes those challenges. So let's begin by establishing a good understanding of a typical ML development cycle. In its most simplified form, you start with the build phase in which you explore the data and develop your algorithm. And then you move into the train phase. During the training, your algorithm processes the training data set to generate a model. Once you have a model that performs satisfactorily, the next phase of the cycle is deployment. In this phase, you deploy your trained model into a production system. So it looks fairly straightforward so far, right? You build, you train, and then you deploy. But if you look a bit closer, you realize that you can't simply deploy something and forget about it. You have to monitor it to make sure that it continues to work the way it is supposed to. And just like we can never be sure that a piece of software is 100% bug free, we can never be sure if the ML models will work as expected all the time. There could be unexpected issues that crop up. One such issue is something called data drift. It is caused by a shift in the statistical characteristics of the data. Let's take a real world example. Let's say you have a model that makes house purchase predictions. Such a model is very likely to have been trained using data sets that include home loan interest rates. Now, if interest rates change substantially due to changes in economic conditions, this model will start to see input values that are substantially different from what it was trained on, and its predictions will start to become less accurate. Detection of this problem is hard, but it is vital so you can retrain your model with new data. And by the way, going from build phase to the train phase, it's never a one-way street. Most of the times, it is a highly iterative process. Your model is not going to be perfect the first time, and you will want to go back and forth trying different variations of features, optimizers, network architectures, and so on. And you need good tools to be able to run such experiments and compare the results. And finally, if we zoom out a little bit, we realize that the ML development cycle is actually part of the virtuous cycle of data. The idea here is that you capture new data as your customers interact with your products. And then you analyze this data to understand your customers' preferences. Based on this understanding, you build new features that your existing customers will like and new features that, help, that will help you win new customers. And with these new features, as more customers interact with your product, you can collect even more data. The point here is you need sophisticated tools to manage all that data and to annotate this data so that it can be used for machine learning. So you can see it's not just a linear build, train, deploy process. There's a lot of complexity involved here, especially when you operate at scale. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a machine learning practitioner. I'm a software engineer at heart. But I have worked with a lot of people who are real ML practitioners. So I want to tell you my story and my learnings through that journey because when I look back, I realize that a lot of challenges that I faced back then were really challenges of operating machine learning workloads at scale. So at one of my previous jobs, I was hired to build this SaaS platform 
you know, software as a service platform that handles streaming videos, videos from surveillance cameras, which can then be processed by machine learning modules. And these modules were supposed to output events whenever they detected something of interest. I was told that these ML modules will be built by a separate team and my task was really to architect this SaaS platform that would make those ML-based features available to users around the world. Now, at that point in time, I already had a lot of experience dealing with live video from surveillance cameras. So I said, okay. And we went ahead and built an entire SaaS platform for video streaming and video management. But we did that with zero understanding of what it takes for the ML team to build their components. All we knew was that the ML team was going to release their features and we were supposed to integrate with that. And the integration was of this form. The ML team would basically ship to us an executable file every time they made a new release. It was pretty much a black box for us. And by us, I mean my software engineering team. We would simply run this executable file with some command line parameters and listen for its output. This worked in the beginning, but at scale, this quickly became a massive problem. Our teams were out of sync. We had no common workflows. As a result, our release cycles were first to break down. One side or the other would never be ready with the same integration code. And so integration tests started to fail very often. Even when we did manage to release into production, the production deployment became a black box for the ML team because they had no visibility, they had no monitoring, no on-demand access to the logs. So troubleshooting became a massive issue for them. Then there was the issue of version control. There was no way for us to track the different versions of the ML modules. I mean, it became so bad that we had to resort to putting that executable file in our Git repository so that we could at least roll back to a known stable state of integration. In hindsight, it was a series of bad decisions and lack of proper tooling. And I think the root of all that was that the ML and the software engineering teams didn't talk to each other. We didn't understand each other much. We were just two separate silos. I mean, I've come a long way since then. I understand machine learning a lot better now. But my story is probably not very unique. It probably resonates with some of you. And with the growth of ML adoption, many are still at the beginning of that ML journey. And so through this session, I hope to give you a lay of the land of what it takes to operate machine learning at scale. Many of the challenges of operating machine learning at scale are very similar in nature to the challenges of operating software at scale. So I think it will help to look at it from that perspective of software engineering. Let's start with this question. Haven't we seen this before? And if you are familiar with operating software at scale, then the answer to that is, yes, we have. ML has evolved from a purely scientific research domain into an engineering practice. Looking back at the evolution of software development, we can draw many parallels. Years ago, computer science was a domain of pure scientific research, but today it has evolved into multiple engineering practices, such as electronics engineering, software engineering, and so on. It is orders of magnitude harder to build and maintain an apartment complex than a standalone house. That's really the difference we want to focus on in this session. Today, software is everywhere. It's in your workstations, it's in your car, it's in your living room, inside the smart TVs and smart lights, it's in your kitchens, in the refrigerators, and it's also in your pockets. That is the scale we are talking about. 
think about how you interacted with software about 10 or 15 years ago, probably only on your desktop computers. But now, it's everywhere. And by the way, machine learning is also already there. So, are we ready to handle that ubiquity of machine learning? To answer that question and to cope with that, we need to turn back the pages. We can learn some lessons from the history of computing. As software became so ubiquitous, the complexity around building and operating software increased mainly along these three dimensions. First, the delivery model. We went from shipping CDs to operating software as a service. Nowadays, you build and operate the software and deliver it as a service. So the reliable operations of that service is your responsibility. And that represents a step change in the complexity of your software development and operational processes. Second, team size. As software becomes feature rich and as your business grows, development teams become larger and complex. With that growth come challenges of communication, coordination and collaboration. And third, sheer scale. As the number of users, the amount of infrastructure needed to support that user base and the amount of data being generated by that massive user base. Now, let's use the same lens to look at the situation of machine learning operations today. Let's talk about the delivery model first. Until a few years back, ML was still very much a research domain. ML practitioners would develop algorithms, models for specific data sets, and the work would usually be focused around developing new algorithms and neural architectures. However, in the last few years, a lot of algorithms have matured. Many diverse types of business use cases can now be addressed using some very versatile machine learning algorithms. This has resulted in the increase in adoption of machine learning. And because a lot of software solutions are increasingly being delivered through this software as a service model, it has naturally resulted in the demand for machine learning to become available as a service. And when you want to deliver ML as a service, you have to extend those SaaS constructs to make them suitable for machine learning as well. For example, how do you do continuous integration and delivery for machine learning? How do you implement automated workflows for machine learning? These become necessary because you want to be able to smoothly roll out newer versions of your ML models into production. You want to be able to perform experiments in real time to see how different models perform and compare them against each other. How do you do that for machine learning models? What I'm saying is the complexity of delivering machine learning solutions is significantly higher in this new delivery model. Next, let's talk about team size. As the team size grows, you want to make sure that everyone on the team has access to a standardized Jupyter notebook environment. Why? Because such standardization helps with collaboration. People can, can share notebooks, features, and pre-trained models. You might have people who specialize in different aspects of machine learning. Some team members might focus on feature engineering while others might focus on algorithm development. And maybe some other members only focus on model tuning. This is where having the right workflows and standardizations becomes very important because your code is no longer built by a single person. Many people contribute to it. And lastly, let's talk about scale. As you deploy machine learning in production, you expose your ML models to a scale that can be anything. From a handful of users today, you might see a sudden uptick 
a user acquisition tomorrow due to changing circumstances that are beyond your control. You might need to acquire bigger GPU farm. You might need to run a lot of distributed training to handle the increasingly larger data sets. You might have to do hyperparameter tuning at a much bigger scale. And with the increasing number of users, your data sets are going to keep getting bigger. So you will need tools to store, label, and curate all of that data. And in order to handle that type of scale, you need access to highly scalable infrastructure and be able to consume it dynamically. If you don't lay the right foundation, the complexity of managing infrastructure can actually grow faster than the increase in user acquisition. Let me say that again. If you don't lay the right foundation, the increase in complexity might happen faster than the increase in your user base. Going back to the drawing board to rebuild everything at a time when your business is seeing an uptick in user acquisition is a really bad place to be because there is so much pressure to keep the user base growing and you will end up having to take shortcuts that you really don't want to. Now, that's enough talking about the different challenges of MLOps. Let's dive into solutions now. Let's see how we can deal with all these challenges on AWS. We'll start with workflow orchestration. And not just because it is a key element for good ML operations, but also because a lot of people think that workflow orchestration is the nirvana of MLOps. I'm here to bust that myth. I do recognize the importance of having a good workflow orchestration tool, but I see that as the start of a good foundation. There are a number of good workflow tools out there, and I want to highlight some of them that not only run on AWS, but also have integrations with various AWS services and features. Metaflow is a cloud-native framework that helps ML practitioners build and manage real-life data science projects. Metaflow was originally developed at Netflix, and it leverages the elasticity of cloud by design. Metaflow was released as an open source project by Netflix in partnership with AWS to provide seamless integration between Metaflow and AWS services such as Amazon S3, AWS Batch, and Amazon SageMaker. Flight is a cloud-native machine learning and data processing platform open-sourced by Lyft. Flight frees you from managing infrastructure, allowing you to concentrate on business problems. It is built on top of Kubernetes and gets all the benefits that containerization provides. Flight has a growing collection of plugins including AWS Batch, Kubernetes, Hive, and Spark. Apache Airflow is a highly extensible open source workflow management platform that was originally developed at Airbnb. It has integrations with several AWS services, including AWS Batch, Amazon S3, and Amazon SageMaker. Many customers want to use the capabilities of Amazon SageMaker for machine learning, but they also want their infrastructure teams to continue using Kubernetes for orchestration. Amazon SageMaker addresses this requirement by letting Kubernetes users train and deploy models in SageMaker using the SageMaker Kubeflow operators and pipelines. We also see some of our customers build serverless machine learning workflows using AWS step functions. AWS has published an open source SDK for Python that allows you to easily create workflows. You can pre-process data using AWS Glue and then train and deploy machine learning models using Amazon SageMaker. As AWS Step Functions is fully serverless, your workflows can scale without having to worry about the infrastructure. Now, let's go back to this development cycle of machine learning. 
This is a generalized view and you will have your own workflow that might differ from this, but the main phases will be pretty much the same. On AWS, there are tools within the Amazon SageMaker ecosystem that address each of these phases. Let's take a look. We'll start with the build phase. This is where you normally start a new project. In the build phase, you will want to analyze your datasets, figure out which features, algorithms, neural architectures work best for your particular use case. So to help with that, you can use Amazon SageMaker notebooks. These are hosted Jupyter notebooks that are available as part of Amazon SageMaker Studio, an integrated development environment for machine learning. You can spin up SageMaker notebooks in seconds. They come with several pre-built ML environments that support common packages and frameworks like NumPy, Scikit-learn, MXNet, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. These notebooks are great for collaboration as you can share your work with your colleagues with a single click. As we saw earlier, the build phase is never a one-off activity. Machine learning practitioners have to explore the data and try many variations of features, algorithms, parameters, and neural architectures to find the combination that makes sense. And to help with this experimentation and comparison, you can use Amazon SageMaker Experiments. SageMaker Experiments helps you track your experiments by capturing all the parameters, metrics, models, and other metadata that went into building each experiment. It helps you organize your experiments and trials so that you can compare them and evaluate them side by side. Sometimes, when you are building ML solutions, it's important to be able to go from zero to one quickly. To help with this, you can use Amazon SageMaker Autopilot. Autopilot is an AutoML feature of SageMaker that supports regression and classification. You can bring your data in a tabular format, like a CSV file, and you can tell Autopilot to create a model that can predict the values of a particular column in your data. Autopilot automatically runs several training trials on your behalf. Once the process is complete, you can view the performance of each trial and you can select the one that you want to use. Autopilot is not a black box. For each trial, you can access the generated model and its source code as a Jupyter Notebook. This is powerful because it lets your ML practitioners go from data to a decently performing model fairly quickly, and then they can focus their efforts on further fine-tuning of those models by modifying the source code. Now let's move to the train phase. You can run small training experiments on a local environment, but when you're dealing with large data sets or algorithms that require access to resources like GPU farms, SageMaker training jobs is the right tool to use. All you have to do is bring your datasets, set up some training parameters, specify an infrastructure configuration, and optionally provide your own training algorithm. By infrastructure configuration, I mean the type of instances to run the training job on and the number of such instances to distribute the job across. SageMaker takes care of starting those instances, bootstraps them with the right software dependencies, and makes your datasets available on those instances. And then it executes your training algorithms. Did you notice that I said you can optionally provide training algorithm? Well, it's optional because Amazon SageMaker provides several built-in algorithms, including XGBoost, Random Cut Forest, K-Means, Image Classification, Object Detection, Blazing Text, and so on. Amazon SageMaker also supports automatic model tuning, also known as hyperparameter tuning. Hyperparameter tuning finds the best version of a model by running many training jobs on your dataset with different hyperparameter values. 
to search the hyperparameter space, Amazon SageMaker hyperparameter tuning supports two strategies, random search and Bayesian search. Next, let's talk about a new feature called SageMaker Debugger. It is a new capability of SageMaker that automatically identifies complex issues if they develop during your ML training jobs. SageMaker Debugger analyzes the internal state of your model while it is being trained to detect common problems such as exploding or vanishing gradients, loss not changing, and so on. If SageMaker Debugger detects a problem, it stops the training job and logs additional information. As the internal state is stored to Amazon S3, you can use SageMaker Debugger SDK to explore the evolution of tensors over time, understand why the issue occurred, and then fix the root cause. So you can see how these features of SageMaker solve specific challenges of operating a machine learning practice at scale. SageMaker notebooks and experiments help improve collaboration across large teams. SageMaker Autopilot and Debugger help improve productivity. SageMaker training jobs and hyperparameter tuning jobs help to orchestrate that underlying infrastructure automatically. Next, let's look at the deploy phase and let's see how Amazon SageMaker helps with that challenge of deploying machine learning models at scale. Once you have trained your model, the model artifacts are stored on Amazon S3. To use those models for real-time inference, you need to host them on servers and expose them as API endpoints. To do that, you can use SageMaker model hosting services, specify some configuration parameters such as the location in S3 where your models are stored, as well as type and number of instances you want SageMaker to host your model on. SageMaker model hosting services takes care of doing the rest. It starts the instances, bootstraps them, deploys your model, it creates a load balancer in front of those instances, and it also sets up a scaling policy so that your deployment can scale in response to user traffic. Sometimes there are use cases that require running batch inference on very large data sets. This is easy to do with Amazon SageMaker Batch Transform. Once again, with a model already trained, all you have to do is specify some configuration parameters, like the location in S3 where your model is stored, as well as uh, the type and number of instances you want SageMaker to deploy your model to. You also specify the S3 location of your input data, as well as an output location where you want the inference results to be stored. SageMaker Batch Transform manages the rest. It starts those instances, bootstraps them, deploys your model. It reads the input data from S3 and distributes that data across all the instances in the fleet. And then it also collects the inference results produced by your model and stores that output to the output location that you have specified. After all the input data has been processed, SageMaker automatically shuts down the underlying infrastructure. As we saw earlier, once you have deployed your machine learning model in production, you need a way to continuously monitor it so that you can detect issues early. And we spoke about one particular issue, data drift. Data drift is a really hard problem to detect because it stems from a gradual shift in the statistical characteristics of the data that you receive. Thankfully, with Amazon SageMaker Model Monitor, you don't have to do it yourself anymore. This capability of SageMaker manages all the statistical analysis and its related infrastructure automatically. SageMaker Model Monitor can support any model hosted with SageMaker hosting services. It can detect the occurrence of data drift and send you alerts so that you can take corrective actions quickly. 
While the ability to monitor deployments is important, it also helps if you can intervene in almost real time if the inference produced by your models is below a certain degree of confidence. Low confidence predictions are not uncommon in machine learning, but if they are exposed to end users, it can lead to fairly poor customer experience. At the AWS reInvent 2019, we announced a new service called Amazon Augmented AI. This service enables human review of machine learning predictions. It allows you to intercept low confidence predictions and have them reviewed by humans before they make their way to the end users. With Amazon Augmented AI, you have three options for providing a human workforce. You can use Amazon Mechanical Turk, you can onboard your own internal workforce, or you can find a service provider via the AWS Marketplace. The AWS Marketplace has vendors that specialize in human review tasks. The last thing I want to talk about is data management. As new data becomes available, it has to be annotated properly before it can be used for machine learning. Whether it is image classification, text classification, object detection, or even semantic segmentation, you can use Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth to manage the data annotation jobs. The way it works is it takes a portion of your data set and distributes that to a team of human labelers. Then, by learning from this initial batch of labeled data, Ground Truth attempts to automatically label the rest of your data. Of these automatically generated labels, only those with high confidence scores are used and the rest of the data is distributed to the human workforce. It is an iterative cycle in which the automatic labeling process gets better over time. In this way, Ground Truth not only standardizes your data annotation workflow, it also reduces the time and effort required to create datasets. Similar to Amazon Augmented AI, Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth also supports three options in terms of selection of a human workforce. You can onboard your own workforce, you can leverage Amazon Mechanical Turk, or you can contract vendors via the AWS Marketplace. AWS Marketplace has vendors that specialize in data labeling tasks. Beyond data annotation, another important part of preparing data sets for model training is pre-processing of data. Data pre-processing can involve various things like handling null values, standardization of formats, one-hot encoding, and so on. In order to perform this type of data pre-processing, you need to orchestrate infrastructure. This can be complicated if you have very large data sets. To help with that, Amazon SageMaker provides a capability called processing. With the Amazon SageMaker processing job, you package your data processing logic in a container, and SageMaker takes care of executing it on highly scalable infrastructure. It also distributes your data across the fleet of instances and collects the process data into an output location on S3 that you specify. Now, all the features that you see highlighted here are available to ML practitioners from a single, fully integrated development environment called Amazon SageMaker Studio. This integrated experience is currently available as a preview in the AWS region in Ohio. I would like to invite you to give it a try and send us feedback. Now, let me recap by revisiting these guys here. Remember them? Yeah, they need to become friends. And I don't mean that they have to exchange cupcakes, but they need to start talking to each other. There is a lot that developers and architects can learn from ML practitioners and vice versa. Software engineering has solved a number of challenges that come with operating at scale. So ML practitioners can learn from that as well. And there are no tools that can help you with this one. 
it's more about having that environment and that workplace culture which fosters cross domain learning and collaboration so please remember to invest in creating that environment and break down those silos and then remember that ml ops increases in complexity along these three dimensions team size delivery model and scale managing that increasing complexity can be quite tedious and involves a lot of repetitive undifferentiated heavy lifting the good news is that you can offload most of that to aws services like amazon sagemaker and amazon augmented ai amazon sagemaker studio and its features like notebooks and experiments help you streamline collaboration across large teams to deal with scale amazon sagemaker's features like training hyperparameter tuning model hosting services and batch transforms really take away that undifferentiated heavy lifting of managing highly scalable infrastructure and lastly amazon sagemaker's integrations with most of the popular workflow orchestration tools help you to streamline the delivery of new models to production and the model monitor feature of amazon sagemaker as well as amazon augmented ai help you to keep a watchful eye on the performance of those models with that summary i will now take your leave but before i go i want to thank you for attending my session and i'll really appreciate your feedback so that we can better understand the topics and services that you are interested in so please do take the time to fill out our survey and let us know what you think thank you